So I think all of you have downloaded the Kahoot app and uh, we can give you the pin and uh, in the pin to uh, participate. So we are not responding. So please avoid answering calls or keep it in uh, uh, do not disturb me more. So we are not responsible for any network errors. Uh, because I many people covered in a small group and uh, you know, loud, loud side, you have to be louder. Yes. So uh, we are not responsible for any network errors and uh, we hope there are Okay. We can't hear at all, it's all so possible. Okay. So, uh, the decision of the quiz master would be fine. And, uh, Our quiz masters are Dr. Muni, uh, Raja Muni, and Dr. Uh, Deepthi Joshi will be conducting it. And uh, uh, we'll have Dr. Srinivas Joshi asking you all the regular questions right to the end. And uh, all the best to you uh, I, uh, can you? Yeah, I can. <clears throat> can so the Kahoot Kaho pin is triple two one three four six. This has been posted in the group already. Triple two one three four six. And please log in using your mobile number so that it is easy for us to identify. And at uh, regular intervals, after every uh, 10 points, after 10 uh, uh, questions, keep announcing the results. Uh, that will not be done. Huh? We will not be doing that. Why? Anyway, they will be seeing the results. No, even then, if you, they know, they can see. But there are some of us who are not seeing. You have to bring that energy into the room. Cannot, cannot be configured at this point. Why? Last time we got we all have to thank Microvision for sponsoring this uh, ARC teaching quiz. I think there is some net issue. How many people are facing net issue here? <laughs> so should we? We don't have any space. <coughs> hmm? There is no other pen slot. Pen paper. Huh? The old pen paper method is what we are asking. We have no option. It's either now or never. If it's now only, then we have to look at it. Nobody has connection. So I do people have for anything? You have? We are connected. We are connected. What is that? See? Please check. We are connected. So keep your fingers crossed. Same. Okay. Triple two one three four six. I'm repeating triple two one three four six. Everyone has got it. Is everybody connected? Anybody without a net connection? Why? Why so many of you? Please recheck. We have no other option. Oh, again. Thirty-two are connected. Yeah, what is 
We are able to contact you. Whoever is outside can please come ahead and sit here, please. So that more people can come in and you all are comfortable. I think it's very uncomfortable standing outside. Please come in. Please come and sit here. Don't stand for Don't stand for Come, come. All this space you are also. Remove your slippers and sit down. Answer sorry then. Let them all come and sit down. Don't look at each other's answers. Because we are giving price only to one person. Everybody we should have tunnel vision now. Ignore your peripheral fields. Twenty seconds to answer each question. So sixty five up here who have been connected. We'll start with this. Wait, wait. Let us also go maybe rapidly check how many people are sitting here. Because we should have that many papers we should have busy. Because you know it's a competitive thing. We ask them to they say their own numbers from this side and that way. We do it much faster. So that we know how many of them are here. All of you have said what do they say? Tell me wait one minute. One, two, three, they won't say. No, no, it's not like that. One, two, three, like that, let them say. In five minutes, we'll buy all the other numbers. You say one, two, two, three. Loudly. Seven. Loud, loud, loud. That word, please. Will be. Do be out if you don't. Louder. Twenty. Okay, twenty-three. No, it's not twenty-three. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. Twenty-six. Twenty-seven. Thirty. 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 She's not there. Thirty. Then. Thirty-one. Thirty-four. Thirty-six. Ah, then. Ah. Forty-one. Then go there. Loudly. Forty-two, no? Loudly, please. Forty-five. Forty-six. Forty-seven. Who is forty-seven? Who is forty-seven? Who is standing with Kadesh first? Forty-seven. Forty-one. Two. Three. Now for the last time. Who is fifty-four? Okay, in this order, there is nobody else, no? Then this, start from there. Fifty four. Fifty four, huh? She is fifty four. You are also there. Fifty five. Fifty five. Nobody else in that row. Okay. Fifty six. Fifty seven. Fifty eight. Fifty nine. Here. Sixty one. Sixty one. Next. Fifty seven. Fifty eight. Thirty-three. So there are eighty-three of us. How many are? Only sixty are connected. So we now start to do the paper format and Sai and. Well, you have to announce it in the PG group. In the PG group. Supervised by us. So, 83, we want 83 slips with the name written. Everybody has it? Anybody who doesn't have, please raise your hand. Everybody has it? Okay. Would you all, would you all write your number also? You all know which number you all said no? Write your number also in the paper. Please write the number on the paper. Number how you say yes ma'am. Serial number. Serial number. Nine numbers. So shall we start? The PPT is ready without the answers. Answer is written. Everybody comfortable? Shall we start? Wait. 
So everybody settle down. Teacher, yes, teacher. Everybody has written down their whole numbers. Is there negative marking? Yes. Even without the five. Five, five for a correct answer and two negative uh, for a wrong answer. Two marks. points. Two points. For a wrong answer and uh, no attempt. Uh, you won't lose any marks. But if you don't attempt, you don't lose marks. And uh, we are taking only four choices: A, B, C, and D. If you write one, two, three, four, it is not automatically translated into. And if the question number is wrong, also you lose the. Yeah. So if it is A, B, C, D in that, it has to be A, B, C, D written by all. Whatever is written there, it has to be written. You have to also write the serial number which you have said now on that paper. Because this, there can be no cheating allowed. No duplicate can be written in that person. Yeah, and write your phone number. Your phone number will be the identifier for us. Identify it. Yeah. Oh, phone number will be the identifier for us. Name yeah. and phone number. So, it is one mark for every five, five marks. Five marks. Last for a wrong answer. Minus two for a wrong answer and no marks for uh, not attempting that is not attempted. Yeah. Understood, sir. <laughs> 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 not no. Yeah. 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 So let's start. Come here, come here. Sit here on this. We are announcing the question. We are reading out the question. And you have to be loud. The hall is full. Don't be in a rush. Yes, so we start with the trial question. This is entirely a trial question. And one minute. I was keeping the timer. If we have 20 seconds. So we have 20 seconds for each question. Okay. So once the bell rings, we move on to the next question. So this is a dummy question. So don't answer this. So uh, yes. The time starts after. Yeah, we'll say the time starts now, and then uh, uh, after 20 seconds, he will ring the bell, bell, and then we move on to the next question. So this is a dummy question. So exotropia refers to. So I'm sure you all know the answer. So, uh, you have to mention uh, in that trial question number 3 or whatever the question number, this doesn't carry any marks and you have to write A, B, C or B. If you write anything additional or you just write A or B or you write 1 or 2, doesn't carry any marks. Correct answer carries 5 marks and a wrong answer would reduce your points by 2. And if you choose not to attempt the question, you don't lose or gain any marks. So, shall we start with the first question? Okay, so uh, watch this video. And the questions would follow on the video. I have not said the time starts now, so you have to watch this video. The light on. Lightning off the night. What is the answer? Look at the people. So you have to watch the video, and the questions would follow. So, following are true about device shown in video, except okay, what is false about the device? That is what you have to mention. So, surface choice number A: surface area is 250 millimeter square. B: stenting suture reduces incidence of hypotony. C: anteriorly located foot plate helps place anchoring suture more anteriorly com uh, compared to barrel glaucoma device. And choice number D is ligature is not required around the tube as there is a stenting suture. So you have to choose the false among all this and your time starts now. Please look at the time. Question number one. Question number one. Please write A, B, C or B. No additional details to be provided. Okay, so we move, move on to the next question. So this following complication is noted after aqueous drainage implant or glaucoma drainage device implantation. Note this complication and your choices will come in the next slide. 
So I'm sure all of you have seen this picture and now I'm going to the questions. This question number two. Following are true except. So you have to again choose the wrong one. Choice number A can resolve with conservative management. Choice number B suturing when possible or if not possible conjectival autograph can be tried. Choice number C the tube should be explanted immediately and the spiral patch graft removed. Choice number D swabs should be taken for culture sensitivity. So your time starts now and you have to choose the wrong option among these four. So you have to choose the wrong option. This is question number 2. So please don't write any other details other than the choice. Time over. So we move on to the third question. So this is complication. Second week post oral lab aqueous drainage implant which is also a glaucoma drainage device. So the complication is shown and the close up photograph is shown on the right. So I am sure you know what complication this is. And if you have seen the picture, the questions would follow on the next slide. This is question number 3. So here you have to uh, choose the correct option. Option A, removal of the implant is indicated. Option B, amniotic membrane grafting can be tried. Option C, conservative management with doxycycline. Option D, suturing of the conjunctiva is indicated. So here you have to choose the correct one. Right? A, B, C or D. This is question number 3. And please don't write any other details. So only A, B, C or D for this question number 3. The correct choice you have to choose. So we are done with this question. Question number 4. So this is a 30 year old complaining of oscillopsia for the past 3 months. So watch this video carefully. So you have to watch this video. I'm sure you have all seen the video. So the choices follow. This question number 4 following are clue about the management. A is voluntary nystagmus, you don't need any further workup. This is choice number A for question number 4. B is you need an oncologist review urgently. C is artificial divergent surgery if MRI brain is normal. And D is retrobulbar botulinum toxin if MRI brain is normal. Among these 4 choices for question number 4, you have to choose the correct option. The time starts now. Close the door. Anybody who goes out cannot come inside. So the correct option, please don't write any other details, only A, B, C or D for question number 4. Whatever is the correct choice, you have to choose that. Okay, your time is over. We move on to question number 5. So this is the second week of post FICO trabeculectomy. The IOP is 13, bleb is flat, cereals is negative and the uh, patient had advanced primary antiprosia glaucoma. So you have uh, this clinical photograph here and the UVM to the right. Please watch both of them and the questions to follow would be from this uh, slide only. So I'm sure you have noted both the clinical photograph as well as the UVM. So I'm moving on to the question for question number 5. So following treatment options can be considered except. So you have to take the wrong charts. A. Iridose Onello Hyalurotomy with or without complete vitrectomy and AC reformation for question number 5. B. Steroids and cyclop digits. C. Systemic glycerol and mannitol. And D. Is topical pilocaptine. So for question number 5, you have to choose the wrong option. So your time starts now. So the wrong option for question number 5. Okay, so we are done with this.
So now coming to question number six. A 56 year old unilateral, unilateral glaucoma of the left eye. IOP is 31 repeatedly and he is defaulting on topical medications. OS IOP 31. Heavily pigmented angles. Normal exam in the right eye. No AC inflammation, not on topical steroids. So, the unilateral glaucoma, IOP is constantly 31 millimeter of mercury. The angles are heavily pigmented. Rest, everything is fine. Not on steroids, no AC inflammation. The right eye is perfectly fine. <coughs> and this is the anterior segment photo. The perimetry. And the disc photo. So following is the most likely responsible for her unilateral glaucoma. What's the most likely cause? Malignant glaucoma. B. Position of IUL. C. Grand syndrome. D. Pigment dispersion syndrome. So what is the most likely responsible cause for her unilateral glaucoma? Correct choice for question number 6. A, B, C or D. So with this we go to the next question now. This is a photo of a glass of a 35 year old with the right side field defect. So you can see the photo clearly now. True about Fresnel prism which is stuck on the glass are all of these except useful for field expansion. Some position adjustment may be needed to mitigate the diplopia. C. Work by moving image towards the apex. D. Usually low power prisms like 6 to 8 prism diopter suffice. So the wrong choice has to be selected. The wrong option has to be selected. About Fresnel prism. Yeah. Question number 7. Write only ABCD, no additional details. <coughs> so hope you have all written the answer. Now let's go to the next question. All are done. So question number 8. This is a patient during the examination. So you can see a variable diplopia in the patient. So there are two patient photographs which have been put up. Right side and the left side. Now following are true regarding further initial investigation except anti-acetylcholine receptor antibody testing. Single fiber EMG electromyograph, repetitive nerve stimulation test, RNST, muscle biopsy. So, which is not used to investigate further in that patient whose photograph was projected? The wrong choice for question number B. The wrong option for question number B. Remember, each correct choice carries 5 plus, and each wrong choice will reduce a point by 3. If you don't fill it out, you can just leave it out. So, time's up. And the next question, question number 9. Video. There is a video here. Both patient 1 and 2 have abduction restriction. Look at this patient. And now look at this patient. Both of them are having an abduction restriction. Okay, so now you need to tell us the cause. Following is true. A. Patient 1 likely has paresis and patient 2 has a tight median rectus or median rectus entrapment. B. Both patients have tight median rectus. C. We cannot comment on this without an FTT. Post-duction test. D. Neostigmin test can help us diagnose the etiology. Which of these is right about the abduction restriction in those two patients which were shown before? Question 9. The correct option you have to select. Which is the most appropriate option? Question 9. So write A, B, C, D for question number 9. Please remember to write your mobile number on the paper. And the serial number and your name. Time's up. 
and this is your 10th question following is true about the use of this modality for managing conjunctival leaks after trabeculectomy so there is something which is been used in the eye for managing conjunctival leaks after trabeculectomy here so following is true about the use of this modality for managing conjunctival leaks select the correct option diameter of around 10 mm suffices the leak typically seals in 3 to 4 days c will not work in streaming leaks and those more than 4 mm from the limbus d it can be used for conjunctival retractions so which of these is a correct option for the 10th question a b c d question number 10 the correct option is c sir okay, your time is up so we move on to the next question so you have this is question number 11 you have a 10 year old with a stormy perinatal period he has delayed milestones and the vision is poor. So note the fundus appearance. So stromy perinatal period, delayed milestones and poor vision. This is question number 11. Note the fundus appearance. And this is the MRI of the same patient. Okay, MRI brain, non-contrast MRI brain of the same patient. So have a look at the MRI also. The questions will follow on the fundus photograph and in the MRI finding. So I guess all of you have seen the MRI. So now I will move on to the questions. Following defects, this is question number 11, may be seen in this condition. A. Simultagnosia, B. Optic ataxia, C. Prosopagnosia and D. All of these. So following defects can be seen in this condition and your time starts now. So select the most appropriate option for question number 11. So remember to write your correct mobile number. Thank you. So this is question number 12. So this is a patient who operated echotrabiculectomy done 5 years back and presenting to us with sudden onset of a rare type. You know the photographs, of, uh, the two photographs. So if you have seen the two photographs, I will move on to the options. Following are true, the correct option for question number 12, except so you have to select the wrong option. The vitreous cavity clear on ultrasound of fundus exam. Topical and systemic antibiotics can be tried. Use of antimetabolites increases risk of this condition. Choice number C is Pseudomonas and indole positive proteas are the most common organisms indicated. Choice number D, conjunctival swab may be of value in guiding the management. So you have to select the wrong option among these four. For question number 12. Time starts now. Okay, we move on to question number 13. So note this appearance, this question number 13. Appearance on gonioscopy after a mixed procedure, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery that has been done. This is the gonioscopic appearance. Okay, uh, taken at around six weeks or so. So the question follows based on this appearance on gonioscopy in this patient after MIGS has been done. So you have to choose the correct option in question number 13. Extent of this is related to surgical success, that is choice number A. B is epistleral fluid venous wave is a predictor of success. See, extent of goniotomy is not important as far as the IOP control is concerned. And option D, pilocarpine is avoided in the post-operative period. So, you have to select the correct, correct option among these four for question number 13. So, remember each correct option carries 5 plus, each wrong carries 2 minus. You may choose to ignore the option if uh, you don't want to answer the question. We move on to question number 14. So this is a test being performed on a patient. So the devices uh, I have shown and also the appearance when a pen light is shown in a dark room. So I am sure you have all seen this photographs, all the three photographs. 
This is for question number 14. So we move on to the questions based on these three photographs. Following are true regarding the following except. So select the wrong option. Option A, it is used to estimate cyclotorsion in cyclovertical palsies. B can be used in supine position also to diagnose Q deviations. Option C, preferably done in a dark room. And option D, more accurate and reliable than using two red Maddox rods. What was shown in the uh, picture is more accurate and reliable than using two Maddox rods. So you have to choose the wrong except. All are two except for question number 14. So we move on to question number 15. So post oral and aqueous drainage implantation after two years review, there is a sudden drop in vision and IOP is unrecordably low and patient has advanced glaucomatous optic neuropathy. So this is a B scan appearance which is shown two years after RD implantation, oral and aqueous drainage implant. So the questions would follow based on these images. So following management options may be considered as the most appropriate initial option. So A, placing a stenting suture in the tube, the correct option is to be selected. B, ligating the tube with 6-0 vitriol. C, option A plus ligature temporary or permanent with choroidal drainage, with or without choroidal drainage. And option D, conservative management. So please select the most appropriate initial management options. A 45 year old male patient presenting with left eye sudden drop in vision. Color vision is normal. No RAPD presented to us after a month. So you can see the perimetry file over there. OCT angel picture is also there on the left side. Following initial management option is most appropriate. We keep them A. IV parasteroids B. Plasma exchange C. Avoid vasoconstrictors Hypotensive episodes and treat atherosclerotic risk factors D. CT angiography So which is the most appropriate initial management for the patient who is perimetry and OCTA picture was projected before. Question 16. This is question number 17. And you can see a video with the goggles which is being placed on the left side. Looks like a video game. <laughs> okay, so now what is this video game which was played with the glasses which was uh, presented on the other side which represents what? So is it saccadic training? A. B. Is it smooth pursuit training? C. Is it target acquisition training for nystagmus? Or D. Is it dichoptic exercises for amblyopia? Correct option. 17. 17. Correct option. Right only A. Direct option for question number 7. <coughs> what is that video game used for? Question number 18. A 30-year-old with normal vision, visual fields and headache. 
So the fundus photograph has been projected. Don't go to the next. So an MRI image is present below. And venography image has also been projected. Normal vision, vision fields, but there is a 30 year old with headache. What is the likely diagnosis? Is it a Foster Kennedy syndrome? Is it a papilledema with raised ICT? Is it papillitis or is it diabetic papillopathy? A, B, C, D. What is the most likely diagnosis? Question number 18. The most appropriate or most likely diagnosis is this. Okay, just one minute. I would have to leave all the very best to you all. Dr. Murli, Pitti and Dr. Sukhima Sushi are here. You all have to, in a calm manner, give all your mark sheets and we will calculate it by sometime today, tonight. Tomorrow in the group, tomorrow sometime if the results will be announced. Okay? All the best congratulations to all of you. I have to go for the inauguration this one day. Get more than you take care of. So we we'll move on to the next question. This is question number 19. Look at this video. So this is Following is true about the procedure on the lateral rectus. Select the most appropriate response. A. It's profound reversible weakening procedure. B. Can be used in third nerve palsy with nil medial rectus function. C. Can be tried in exotropic DRS with severe co-contraction. Or D. All of this. So that was a surgical procedure done on lateral rectus. So which of these is correct about that procedure? A, B, C or D? Yes. Good evening, everyone. I'm sure all of you are having. I'm writing it down. Okay. Question number 20. Can you see that figure? So, what's that? That's the fundus of the fluorescence pictures. 1, 2, 3, 4. Both right eye, left eye, bilateral. Very simple. Right? So, the following is true about this 23 year old asymptomatic patient. Please remember asymptomatic patient with blurred optic disc margins. Okay? What could be the most appropriate answer? non arthritic AION is a possible association? Possible. Has a characteristic appearance on OCT, enhanced depth imaging of the optic disc. Fundus closing angiography is definitely not needed because it is a very clear cut evidence of FAF or fundus lot of fluorescence or whether it is all of these. Please remember, please choose the most appropriate answer. NAION is a, just a possible association. It's not, it's not telling directly, right? Giving you a lot of clues in this. Thanks. Has a characteristic appearance on OCT EDI. Fundus fluorescence angiography is definitely not needed 
all of you okay good next 53 year old or symptomatic type 2 diabetic with a vision 6 by 6 and again vision 6 by 6 OU normal color vision normal color vision motility and pupillary reactions are all okay BP is 140 by 90 MRI brain is normal so what's the most likely diagnosis in this case so this is the visual field of both right and left eye and select the most appropriate initial management option type diabetic control and serial follow up urgent MRV and MRI with contrast oral aspirin only or is pulse steroid needed ok 6 6 vision normal color vision pupillary reactions are normal ok we move on to the next question so uh, you have this note this photograph medical photograph and then note this video of cover test alternate cover test so please note it very carefully note it very very carefully the deviation of the eye under cover so that's a translucent occluder so please note for either eye so you have noted uh, both the photograph as well as the clinical video so I will move on to the question. Select the most appropriate response. A. Optic disc drag could cause this. B. Positive angle kappa is likely. C. OD may be amniotic. And D. All of these. So you have to select the most appropriate option. 22nd question. A, B, C or D. on to the next question. So this is a clinical photograph. Note this clinical photograph very carefully. Note what the arrow is pointing. So this patient had a late onset after a few years, consecutive esotropia after a lateral rectus incision. So the muscle that is being uh, shown is a lateral rectus. And the arrow is pointing to the abnormality. So this is for a late onset, consecutive esotropia after lateral rectus was weakened. Okay, so this is question number 23. So, what is the likely diagnosis? A. It is a stretched scar. B. It is a slipped muscle. C. Lateral rectus bifid insertion. And D. It is a normal lateral rectus. So, you have to select the most appropriate, most likely diagnosis for question number 23. On to the next question. So here you have a 23 year old, this question number 24, 23 year old with right acute retrobulbar neuritis. This is the first episode. Okay, this is the first episode and note the MRI abnormalities. I'm sure we are, you know, are seeing the MRI abnormalities here. So this is a 23 year old, remember, and patient has acute right retrobulbar neuritis, first episode. So if you have seen the MRI pictures, I would move on to the question. Following up, this is for question number 24. Following up management options except, so select the wrong choice A. IV pulse steroids, B. Test for anti MOG and anti MMO, C. CSF analysis for oligoclonal bands, and D. Disease, uh, discuss disease modifying therapy with neurologists. So you have to select the most appropriate option. That is the wrong option. Wrong option you have to select, which you would not do for this question number 24. The front front row is empty. Anybody who wants to come and sit here, please come. This is question number 25. Patient with findings seen in these images, note these cornea images on the clamp very carefully. So you have to identify the type of corneal dystrophy. I am sure you have noted all the images including the close-ups. So this is for question 25. 
So, patient with these findings is most likely to have what type of corneal dystrophy? So, please have a look. And uh, so, a patient with these findings is most likely to have what type of corneal dystrophy? Question number 25. So, A. Schneider corneal dystrophy, B. Epithelial basement membrane dystrophy, C. Lisch epithelial corneal dystrophy, and D. Granular corneal dystrophy. So, you have to select what is the most likely type of corneal dystrophy in this patient, in this patient whose red lamp photo was projected. So, question number 26. You have a 24 year old woman who presents with ocular irritation, foreign body sensation. Reduce vision in the right eye and findings shown in the figure. So here you have to uh, of course identify the dystrophy only then you can answer the question. What would be the histopathologic examination of the corneal specimen? 26. Option A amyloid deposit. B cholesterol and neutral fats. C acid mucopolysaccharides and D highly. So your time starts now. Okay. Question 27. The patient came with a vitreous hemorrhage. What is the finding? Which syndrome is associated with the finding? See that hemorrhage. So you have to identify pre-retinal, subhyloid, subretinal, then only you will get it. Right? Identify that. You see that sign. You see the shape of that. That will give you a clue. Now, the patient, what is the finding? Which syndrome? Vitreous hemorrhage, Kershaw's retinopathy. Subhyloid hemorrhage with tertian syndrome. Is it a pre-retinal hemorrhage with blood dyscrasia or retinopathy? Or whether it's a subretinal hemorrhage which is secondary to either PCD or CNBI. It's a very straightforward and very easy question. Okay? Okay, you want to see the image? See the shape of that uh, hemorrhage that will give you a clue. Okay, option. Okay, done. Next question. What is the name of the biomarker shown in this OCT picture? What is the significance? Please remember the box. Don't see out of the box, see inside the box. Okay, whether is it a drill? Disorganized retinal inner layers such as ischemia and carries poor prognosis, or whether it's a CME because you saw those two cystoid spaces by the side, such as good, good, good prognosis, <laughs> or whether it is again ORTs because most of it looks like ORTs, right? So, suggest anterior occlusion, none of the above. <laughs> ah, you want the picture again? I told you so much. Only Mulli is a very strict uh, fuse master. Okay? See the box. Inside the box, I said, don't see out of the box. Okay. Can't give more clue than this. Name the sign on the fundus photo and OCT. Which drug toxicity shows this? When it says drug toxicity, it's very simple. <laughs> I'm not giving you any answer, uh, drug. Okay? See the OCT? You see under the phobia, the outer retinal layers are preserved. Only the side is disturbed. See the fundus photograph. If I say that, you will get it. I will not say. RP changes again in the center in the macula. So, bullseye maculopathy with flying saucer sign indicating hydroxychloroquine toxicity. Bullseye maculopathy with a dipping sign with hydroxychloroquine toxicity, bullseye maculopathy, the flying saucer sign with a cone rod dystrophy, none of the above. Okay? 
मैडम वांट्स टू सी द ओस्टेट ओके दिस इज द ओस्टेट एंड दैट इज द फॉर द स्पीच ओके वेरी स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड इमेजिन एंड राइट दिस आंसर्स So there is an A S O C T scan which has been put up here, and there are some things which have been projected on the A S O C T scan. So identify the diagnosis which is shown in this scan. Is it a D M detachment? Is it a corneal edema? Is it a intracorneal ring segments, or is it corneal cutting? This one. A, B, C, or D. It's all done. Question number thirty-one. Identify the diagnosis which is shown in this pentacam image. So you can see the pentacam image over there. It's known as some shape. The anterior, posterior, or elevations are given. So let me go to the diagnosis now. Is it pellucid marginal degeneration? Is it Terriens marginal degeneration? Is it frank teratoconus or is it keratoglobus? A, B, C, or D? Pellucid, Terriens, keratoconus, keratoglobus. I told you. So now we go to the question number thirty-two. A fifteen-year-old male patient came to operate with the complaints of blurring of vision in the right eye. BCV in the right eye was six by nine with those topographic changes what have been shown in the on the left side. So what should be the preferred treatment plan? Look at the color coding. Vision is six by nine, but he complains that there is still a blur in the right eye, and that's the topography image. Look at the colors, green and red, and now identify the diagnosis. Is the treatment a topography guided PRK with CXL, collagen cross linking, DALC observation? Many of the PGs are leaving so many questions blank. It's just minus two. Attempt करलो कौन सा life and death का सवाल है? Just attempt it. When I sat there, I saw the paper totally blank actually. It's plus five minus two, so there is lot of chances that you will get plus five. So let's go to the next question now. It is question number thirty-three. So you see something over there which is straightforward. Okay, everybody knows this. Which of the following occurs with the condition which was projected in that figure? The steepest meridian of the cornea is adjacent to this lesion. B. These are benign with no malignant potential. C. They can grow rapidly. D. Patients may also have congenital cardiac defects. So which is Correct about the condition which was shown to you before. Is it A, B, C, or D? The image was very clear. Do anybody wants to see it back? Okay. So now question number thirty-four. You can see something over the cornea over there. Concerning the patient in figure, after what number of incisions does the gastric effect per incision decrease significantly? So you are seeing some incisions over the cornea. How many incisions should be given so that the gastric effect per incision decreases significantly? 
Is it 4? Is it 8? Is it 16? Or is it 32? What is the number of the incision which should be given? To make the result significant. So I hand over the mic now. Remember plus 5 minus 2. Don't leave the question. Uh, what question number 35? So see the fundus picture and the fundus autofluorescence and you have to identify the gene involved in this disease. So see the fundus photograph and also the uh, autofluorescence. Question number 35. So the options are A. Akka 4, B PRPH2, C BEST1, and D TIMP3. So you have to select the uh, correct option. Most likely, G which was involved with the fundus appearance, the first one. These are the genes. So if you have selected the correct option, then move on to the next one. So what should be the vault size in picky chiodos? A half to one and half of corneal thickness. B one and half to twice of corneal thickness. C twice to two and a half of corneal thickness or D two and a half to thrice of corneal thickness. What is the vault in picky chiodos? So your time starts now. Question number 37. So you have the B scan of a lesion that was seen on fundus. You have to see this and uh, you have to tell what the most likely diagnosis. So the option A, polystat appearance, choroidal melanoma. Option B, dome-shaped heterogeneous mass, choroidal metastasis. C, dome-shaped homogeneous mass, choroidal hemangioma. And D, none of the above. One the image again. There you go, that's the image. And these are the options. So question number 38, you have a 32 year old female who came with diminution of vision, redness, pain and watering in the right eye for 15 days. You have the clinical uh, photo and the confocal microscopy image and she is a contact lens bearer. So you have to identify the organism that is most likely to be positive, noting the confocal picture as well as the uh, photograph of the cornea. So you have to identify what is the organism that is most likely to be positive. So option, option A, fungal keratitis, B, pseudomonas keratitis, C, acanthamoeba keratitis, and D, microsporidial keratitis. You have to identify which is the most common one. On to question number 39. So, note this clinical picture. So, note it very carefully. So, note this clinical picture, this and this. What the three ocular motility diagrams in the horizontal plane? I should have put it horizontally across so you know what is restricted. And then these are the MRI images that are shown here. Because the diagnosis is a little obvious, so I did not give you much of the history. Then I could tell you something here where my arrow is pointing, that is the abnormal area I have not seen here. So the lateral lectus goes through some kind of a canal. Sorry, the sixth nerve goes through some kind of a canal. So the diagnosis, option A, gradinigo syndrome, B, internal carotid artery aneurysm, 
see pontine glioma and the normal MRI. So you have to select the correct option. And you have only two more questions to go. So remember each correct correct answer gives you 5 plus and each wrong answer gives you 2 minus. So only two more questions. So question 40, what is the diagnosis in this picture? So note this fundus appearance and you have to uh, mention the diagnosis. Option A, serpiginous choroiditis, B, serpiginoid choroiditis, C, multifocal choroiditis, and D, frosted branch angiitis. I go back to the picture. Yeah. It's a very clear cut answer. It's a very clear cut answer. Huh? Got it. Thanks, sir. Huh? One more question is there. Last question. Uh, so, what is the ideology? See this horrifying things from this picture. What is the ideology of this uh, picture? Yes, whether it's a CMB retinitis, a toxoplasmic retinitis, SLE retinitis, or one of the above. Please remember, the patient is immunocompromised. Think that the patient is immunocompromised. Please, don't, 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 don't take it. Immunocompromised patient is on steroids or immunocompromised. We don't know. So what are the diagnoses? Whether it's CMB, toxoplasma, SLE, Okay, please hand over your answer sheets. Medium of complexity. Easy, medium complexity, tough. Moderate. No, no. So next time we should make it little more harder or easier. Harder. Huh? Sure. Start from 50. Question 50. Sorry, question 40. 41. Everybody give your papers. Once they come on the stage, then nobody will be able to give their papers because they are discussing the answers. And what if you recorrect and tell it again? Like three days, you know, what happened in three days? He put the paper and then he jumbled it up and he ran away. Ran so. So that cannot happen. So all of them are coming. Hey, please don't go. We are discussing the answer. Just 10 minutes will quickly. We'll run through. Uh, those who are not interested can go. <laughs> 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 
Everybody has handed over their papers. Who hasn't handed over, please raise your hand. Okay, LOC madam. Please, this side, you come. Once it's collected, now everything is collected. All done. So don't collect any more papers if they give back. Time is up. We'll go to 50. Question 50. You want to go from first? Ah.
So, rest are correct. This is the wrong text. So, uh, this is a highly variable process, if you notice. So, highly, extremely variable process. This can only be because of myasthenia. Okay, the diagnosis is myasthenia even without it doing anything else. So, not here. Left eye uh, process at one point of time, and the other right eye process. And I have uh, actually uh, put this hand here so that the contralist action is completely mitigated. So, uh, this is during the exam, the process gradually increases. So, this kind of variability. Almost so, but I still put it as an initial investigation. So, anti ACH receptor antibody testing, yes, definitely. Single fiber EMG, RNST, they are all investigations done for myasthenia. Muscle biopsy may not be indicated because you are clinically thinking of myasthenia. Just to avoid controversy, I put it as an initial investigation. So, muscle biopsy is the uh, choice that is because it is exception. So, uh, this, if you see, this is the floating saccade. Okay, this right, this right eye movement is the floating saccade. The eye tends to move out very slowly. There is an abduction restriction, but the eye is moving out very slowly. Whereas this is a feathered stop. It happens in a restriction. Not that the speed of eye movement during abduction is good, but uh, it is as if something is uh, suddenly holding the muscle like a leash. Okay, so, uh, the right eye is a paresis and the left eye is a restriction. That is the correct choice. The right eye is a paresis and the left eye is a restriction. So, uh, you can definitely come in, come in without an MPT. If I saccade, you can uh, clinical observation is helpful in children, but I cannot do this. The neostigmine test is a dummy. So, this is the correct one. So, this is a bandage contact lens used for uh, uh, managing small connectoral leaks. Okay, focal connectoral leaks after clinical activity. Usually, two to three weeks of application is required. And uh, it will not work for streaming leaks. Uh, 10 millimeter is the wrong choice. You usually use 14 to 16 millimeter. And uh, the leak takes two to three weeks to seal, and uh, definitely it cannot work in streaming leaks or uh, only the focal pinpoint leaks. It could work. And if the leak is more than four millimeter, the contact lens will not reach there. So, more than four millimeter from the limbus is not an option. Streaming leak, it won't work. And if there is a conjectival refraction, you have to go back and seal it. So, leak takes two to three weeks to heal, and 10 millimeter is useless because it will not go beyond the contact. So, the correct choice is it will not work for streaming leaks and more than four millimeter. So this is a very classic picture, 10 year old with uh, stromy perinatal period, delayed milestones and poor vision. Uh, patient has bilateral optic atrophy and uh, this is also a very classic appearance. If you notice, there is dilatation of the ventricle with biosis of the occipital lobe, there is hardly any white matter here. So uh, if you notice here, uh, this is the dilatation, if you describe it, there is a dilatation that is playing of the ventricles. If you distinguish it from hydrocephalus because the temporal horns are not dilated, hydrocephalus in the temporal horns will be dilated. And anyway, there is this occipital glyosis there. So, uh, this is a patient with cerebral visual impairment. And all these effects may be seen. Simultagnosia is if you present uh, to him a car and you present a tree, patient will be able to identify it separately. But if you put it together, he will not be able to piece it together. Optic ataxia is some kind of a staggering movement in target acquisition. Prosopagnosia is a difficulty in identifying faces. And all of these are seen in cerebral visual impairment. So, uh, choice D is the correct uh, answer. Choice D is the correct answer. So, this is a bleb related endophthalmite, it's a bleb related infection. So, uh, that's why I put 5 years because it's a late onset, usually it is caused by the commensals. So, indoor positive proteas and pseudomonas may be iatrogenic, but uh, late coming after 5 years, uh, they are not generally the most common organisms. So, uh, vitreous cavity is clear, this is correct, connectable swab is used, and use of antimetabolites also increases risk of this condition. Condition if it was an early, I would have thought of pseudomonas and indoor positive proteas, but if it is a late thing, it's a quite negative strict focus. And uh, the commensals usually cause this. So, uh, this is the uh, choice. See, this is the wrong uh, choice. So, this is uh, appearing after GAD. This, this appearance, if you notice this gutter like thing here, it is a trabecular shell. Okay, the extent of trabecular shell, it, is, it doesn't correlate with the success. But what correlates with success in GAD is uh, the appearance of epistereal fluid venous. So, the epistemal fluid venous layer is the correct answer. Pilocarpine is actually given in the post operative period because you don't want the eyes going and sticking there uh, and blocking the trabeculation. So, choice B is the correct option. Choice B is the correct option. Epistemal fluid venous layer is the uh, correct choice. This is a double medox rod test being done. Earlier, uh, it was done with a white medox rod and a red medox rod. Later on, uh, two red medox rods is said to give less of a false uh, response. Uh, so sometimes this use of white and uh, red medox rod to localize the extraction to the normal light. So, uh, the correct um, choices you always use two red medox rods, which is uh, more accurate. The rest is correct. Actually, supine position is Q deviation, the uh, torsion will go away. 
So that is how you differentiate between SQ deviation and superior of false. So uh, choice D is the wrong choice, uh, which has to be selected for your answer. So more accurate and reliable is wrong, it is less accurate and reliable. So this is a kissing choroidal after ID two years later. So whenever you have something like a kissing choroid, you have to go in and drain. And drainage alone will not suffice. You have to put a stenting suture in the ID and you also have to put a temporary or a permanent ligation. So here the more evil is the hypotenuse because the pressure is unrecordably low. And this kissing choroid will not go away even if you drain it, it is going to come back again. So you have to drain it of course, but uh, you also have to uh, uh, do something for the hypotenuse. So choroidal drainage was their only option. See, sometimes putting a stenting suture will work if there is a chronic hypotenuse, hypotenuse maculopathy, but there is a kissing choroid, you have to uh, do a choroidal drainage with uh, a temporary ligature uh, and uh, stenting. So uh, this is a very typical uh, non arteriate I mean, it is an ischemic optic neuropathy, most likely non arteriate If you see the OCP angiography, so you see the superior capillary loss here. Corresponding, there is an inferior altitudinal <coughs> Okay, and uh, specifically I have mentioned it presented to us after a month when the disc edema is withdrawn. So very typical ischemic optic neuropathy only, uh, especially because the OCP angiography picture is correlating. So actually capillary plexus is lost here. So there is an inferior altitudinal field defect. So management of atherosclerotic risk factors if, if a hypertension to avoid vasopharyngeal that is the correct choice. CT angiography is not going to help you here because the vessels are so small they can never be seen. So uh, yeah, this is uh, actually a dichotic exercise. So if you see, uh, if you wear the red and blue glass, you can play the game because you are splitting the game into two. So one eye will see the blue uh, this thing, a blue tank, and the other eye will see the red cars that are approaching. So this is a dichotic treatment. Dichotic is you can play the game only when both eyes are used together. To split the game into half, either with a 3D goggle or with a red green glass. So this is called an anaglyph glass, red green anaglyph glass. We split the game into two. So this is a dichotic treatment for anglyphia management. Uh, this is a proprietary software by Knox. So I didn't put it because we don't have any financial interest here. So dichotic exercise is the correct answer. So uh, this is a, a classic papillary demon. Uh, so here there is a transverse sinus stenosis, which is a uh, often a common finding in patients with IH. What is important is you have a uh, you know subretinal fluid here, and the Brooks membrane is pointing inward. You have flattening of the posterior sclera, no implicating lesion and risky edema. So I have already mentioned normal vision and visual fields. So uh, so you have risky edema with normal vision and bilateral resisting and headache also. You are thinking of uh, IIH only. Foster Kennedy is not the option because one risk is not really paid. So papilledema with raised ICP is the option. Papillitis, if there was a vision drop, you would have thought of it, but vision is normal, uh, which we specifically mentioned. So papilledema with raised ICP and the Brooks membrane is also pointing inward. So this is actually a lateral rectus deactivation. You suture the lateral rectus to the orbital periosteum. So you have secured the lateral rectus and then once you have uh, exposed the orbital periosteum to uh, prolapse the lateral rectus out and uh, you are securing the lateral rectus to the orbital periosteum. So you would do this kind of a profound weakening procedure. It's a profound potentially reversible because you can uh, of course go and get back the lateral rectus also. You would do it only in the following condition. It's a profound reversible weakening. You can use it as hard now because none of the other muscles are working. So uh, whatever you do to the medial rectus is not going to work. It's tried in exotropic uh, DRS also and all of these is the correct answer. So it's a lateral rectus periosteal fixation or a lateral rectus deactivation. So all of these is the correct answer. This of course. Uh, yes, let them answer. Okay. Ah, very good. Optic disc bruising. Very simple answer. So NAIM could be a possibility because it can cause the pressure on that and, and it has a characteristic appearance on the OCT. If you do an EDI on the OCT of the optic nerve head, definitely photosclerosis in angiography, as I kept on telling, is not needed because the FAF is already showing the bruising uh, autofluorescence. And uh, so answer is. All of these, very good. Next. Yes, anybody? What's the diagnosis? So, if you notice, the left eye is the edematous disc, whereas the field effect is on the right eye. Okay, if at all you wanted to say. Yes? Yes, dramatic papillopathy. That's why you see the vision. 6 by 6, no patient is having this edema. So, what will be the answer for this? Next, sir. Huh? Pulse steroids. Hey, already diabetes, you send him up. <laughs> so it is just a tight diabetic control with serial follow because it's a diabetic papillopathy, it's a benign condition, vision loss will be uh, not, not there and color vision, 
as I kept on telling. So if the color vision was this thing, then you would have said you should have suspected optic neuritis and then pulse steroid would have been required for. So this is a pseudo exotropia actually, positive angle kappa. If you notice on cover test, the right eye seems to go up a little bit. So there is a right DVD, uh, it's not seen on the left side. Okay, but other than that, there is no horizontal movement, even though the uh, even though the brush bug would indicate that there is an uh, exotropia here. So the correct answer is uh, optic disc drag can cause this positive angle kappa is likely, and uh, right eye is amblyopic to the degree. So the correct answer is all of this. So this is this was the fungus appear in the and uh, so this is actually a stretch scar, as specifically put. Uh, late onset, I even mentioned that five years later. So if you notice here, there is a fleshy muscle here and there is a sharp step where you see the pseudo tendon. So this is actually a stretch scar, not a slip muscle because slip muscle was present earlier on. Okay, so anyway, the appearance is also very characteristic of a stretch scar. Okay. So uh, this is actually a, a right eye retrobulbar neuritis. You see these uh, demyelinating plaques here. What are they called? Dawson's fingers and uh, what is very difficult here, if you see the small ring here, um, yeah, if you see this uh, small ring here, this is an open ring sign, very specific for multiple sclerosis. So um, the uh, thing is if you have, uh, if you have MRI evidence of multiple sclerosis, then you don't need to do anti-mog and NNO antibodies anymore. So everything else is correct, uh, CSF analysis for oligoclonal bands is required because that is what is multiple sclerosis. So you, this is the first episode, so you would discuss it with the neurologist. Anti-log and anti-NMO is not required because the MRI is very much suggestive of multiple sclerosis. The open ring sign and the Dawson speakers are very specific for multiple sclerosis. So, uh, so this is this you should need not do. Okay, this uh, all of you know this is a granular dystrophy, and uh, because the cornea in between is clear, so this is a granular cornea dystrophy, and uh, yes, crumb-like appearance. So this is a macular dystrophy, and uh, so you know that acid mucopolysaccharide is what. Uh, ah, yes, shape. shape. I kept on telling. Ah, red shape. So that's the subhyoid hemorrhage, right? If there was a subretinal hemorrhage, how would you differentiate? The vessels, so line vessels could have been seen. Here it is not seen, right? And the shape, typical shape of it, it's a subhyoid hemorrhage. So what is it? Tertian Ah, yes. Drill. Very easy. It looks like an ORTs, or sometimes you might uh, get confused with pseudo cystoid spaces of cystoid spaces. But these are not. This is a, basically a cystoid space in a drill phase. Drill is disorganization of retinal inner layer, which carries poor prognosis. So the patient has to be explained that even after anti of or the steroid therapy, the patient will not be getting good vision. And in these kind of chronic macular edema cases, these are, right? So in these cases, the steroids, that is dexamethasone is more preferred than anti in these kind of cases. Yes? Flying saucer sign, right? So you see, I, I kept on telling them. So what happens here? You see, there is loss of the ellipsoid zone. Only the outer retinal layers below the fovea is preserved. So there is a periphobial toxic periphobial lesion, what we call it, and the fundus shows bullseye maculopathy. That is the RPE disturbance you see there, and that's why it's called as a hydroxychloroquine. What's the maximum dose of hydroxychloroquine? Usually around 200 to 400 milligram per day. If it crosses more than that, then there are signs of hydroxychloroquine toxicity. So this, you know, it's intracranial segment. Intracranial ring segment. You can see uh, the holes here. Intracranial ring. Intracranial ring segment is the character. So uh, this is a pellucid marginal degeneration. I mean, I can not my specialty. So this is marginal degeneration. And the preferred treatment plan is to go guided via K plus CX. So these are multiple corneal dermoids. So uh, actually the area adjacent to the dermoid has the maximum flattening. So, so these are benign with no malignant potential. They don't grow like Benign with no malignant potential. What Yeah, I know they, uh, they may 
also have congenital cardiac defects. Golden heart doesn't play typically uh, congenital cardiac defects. Can so this is an RK and more than eight uh, reduces the more than eight is uh, more than eight in situation. So this is Stargard gene, uh, Stargard disease, and APCA4 is the uh, APCA4 is the what, what is ABCA4? Okay, and uh, what does PRPH2? PRPH2? What was it earlier? Earlier it was called as rectal degeneration slow disease gene, RDS gene. Now they have changed it into PRPH2. What does it cause? Yes, some kinds of pattern dystrophy or even autosomal dominant uh, retinitis pigmentosa. And uh, the, what was the other genes? The best you all know? Bestrophin. Bestrophin 1. Yes, best disease or vitelliform macular dystrophy. And last is TIM. Sorsby fundus. Very good. Sorsby. Character says Akka And void size should be half to one and a half of one year. The rest are a straightforward question. Half to one and a half of one year. Is it heterogeneous or homogeneous? Homogeneous. So it's a dome shape, right? So it's a dome shape homogeneous choroidal hemangioma. So, uh, okay. Yeah, so this, anybody got it, right? Yeah, I'm writing this. It's a, see, this patient has a right sixth nerve for the right abduction disease. And if you notice this, sorry, I really didn't put that ear discharge because uh, that would have made the diagnosis very, very obvious. So, if you notice here, this is the Petrus apex, which is why I did point to this. So, Dorello canal is where the six nerve travels through. So, it's a petrocytis. It's a petrocytis with. Uh, I did point to this. This is the abnormal area. You see, it's not seen on the left side. So, Gradinigo syndrome is the correct answer. So, serpiginous choroidopathy, serpentine pattern, right? Of course, it's, it would have been, uh, we have given the both the thing, then it would have been really good because it's a bilateral disorder. And what, what is the treatment for this epigenous choroidopathy? Heavy steroids, man, not just steroids. Heavy steroids because the, it, it, it progresses very fast and it usually carries a very poor prognosis. Any intravitreal injection can be tried in this. Have they tried any intravitreal injections? Hey, not Augustine. Huh? I be pregnant. Methotrexate has been tried. Intravitreal methotrexate has been tried and many other kind of intravitreal agents which are basically the biologicals or immunomodulators are tried. Yes, last question. Huh? CMV? Anybody else? All of the above. That's why I kept on telling. All of the above because it can happen even in the SLE retinopathy also. It can happen in Toxoplasmic retinitis, but it's rare because usually toxoplasmic, what happens? You see, headlight, the fog appearance, there's, there's dense amounts of vitritis. But these were taking, showing the picture more of vasculitis pictures, right? So it can be an SLE, it can be uh, uh, toxo, or it can be CLE. That's why we said the patient might be immunocompromised, or the patient must be using some immunomodulators or any of these kind of disease where these kind of very bad vasculitis reactions can happen. Okay? So I would like to thank uh, Dr. Mugi sir, Dr. Deepthi, and uh, our ARC gems, Ray Murgan and like, the entire team, Dr. Tamil is here, and all the ARC team. I am really thankful to all of them. Hope you enjoyed the quiz. So next year we will come out with something more interesting. And thank you, Dr. Keerthi madam, for gracing the occasion as the chief guest for this quiz program. Thank you.